fuck it, I'll lose. <laughs> we are live! <laughs> What's going on, guys? Welcome to Beastly Thoughts Live, episode 143. We're fuck it, I'll lose. <laughs> we are God live! Oh, what <laughs> What's going when, on, guys? We're going to have to do that episode Welcome drunk. to Beastly you Thoughts can, Live, you know, bring episode 143. Yeah, and I'll, I'll get some rubbing alcohol and I'll sniff it. And we're going to just do 150 like some gangsters. Fuck it. Like hey, gangsters. guys. Gangsters. That's, <laughs> you know, that's what Tupac and Biggie used to do. They just did it, you know, behind closed doors. Just sniff a little bit of alcohol and come out and act like a thug. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> so I went to uh, my friends, actually twin brothers. Their twin brothers were, um, it was their 40th birthday. So it's and 80 I, years. Yeah, 80 years combined. <laughs> so I went to their party last night. And I was working hard all day. And it was one of those days where, you know, you're just so into what you're doing that you just forget to eat. Yep. So I go to this bar. It's in the middle of fucking nowhere, right? It's just like a like bar. The whole and I figure, the whole you know, I'll just okay. eat something when I get to the bar, you know, because I was starving. But all they had was beer. So... <laughs> Feels we'll right up. over today. That's the moral <laughs> of that story. <laughs> If I nod off during the show, please forgive. <laughs> yeah, if you have to fall asleep, it's just we'll handle it. Yeah, it's really, really weird. You, you guys know I don't drink, um, but last night I had some wine with my wife, some Moscato, uh -huh. and uh, we hung out. And you guys know I don't drink, and we ended up going through two bottles. And put it this way, I used to drink a lot. Now I'm a complete lightweight. Yeah, to the point where my 110 pound wife is laughing at me because of the way that I'm acting. Yeah. Barely able to walk around and, you know, You should put the VR headset on. No. <laughs> I woke up this oh, morning feeling yeah. like crap, but thank goodness it wore off really, really quick. <laughs> oh, man. So it was one of those days, bro. I told you, man, we got so much in common. It's just kind of scary. This is the Twilight Zone. <laughs> That's true, right? Hey, yeah. I want to talk about what I've been playing because I'm really excited about it this week. Um, you guys know that I got the HTC Vive. Uh, yes. I'm really enjoying that quite a bit. Um, and I found a game that I am super passionate about. And this it looks thing is awesome. early access. Uh, there's a video on my channel. If you look at my channel, I did like an HTC Vive unboxing. And also like the Your title of the video is like game. my new favorite VR game, right? The game is called Onward. Am I locked up? Uh, just a little bit. There now we go. you're back. All right, we're back. Uh, so the game is called Onward. And if you've ever played like Search and Destroy in Call of Duty or if you've played... A counter strike you're gonna get a very similar feel to this there's an objective it's a first person shooter it's realistic like military guns and stuff it's so realistic actually that like reloading your weapon you've got to like release the magazine pull the magazine out of the gun grab another magazine from your the you know the pouch on your chest stick it into the gun and then cock the gun right like that's your reload right it's that not just like awesome. pushing a reload button on a controller you actually gotta like yeah, you gotta really do a lot of fidgeting. <laughs> a little awkward. Yeah, man. Like, and before you get used to it, it can take a good minute. <laughs> you know, before those, those, that movement is kind of locked in your brain. But once you get into this game, what you're confronted with is like maps that there's only seven maps in the game. It's still mm -hmm. in early access. There's like some janky animations and stuff because it's you know it's a small development team. I, I think it might just be one, one guy. guy? Yeah. It might be, and. uh but it basically plays like those games I mentioned earlier, like those kind of militaristic, arcadey though, first person shooters where you're on a team, you, you got communication with the team, and people communicate in this game pretty, pretty good. And you have to either wipe out the other team or you have to plant a bomb on the objective. <coughs> to plant a bomb, you have an iPad that you gotta pull out, and there's like an eight digit code on your iPad that you either have to memorize before the match or you have to pull out and look at when you get to your objective and then punch into the bomb. <laughs> so it's like, it's really fun. You're running around, you're holding the gun up. Like you got to aim down the sight like a real gun. It's If you're using like a two-handed gun, like a rifle, you have to hold the gu gun up with two hands. You can customize the scope. Are you, you serious? Have. Like you yeah. actually hold it like this? Yeah, you're holding it like this with the two Vive oh, controllers. Oh my gosh. Like this. This is insane. Right? And you got to look down the site. There's there's real recoil. So you have to compensate <laughs> by that 
by pulling down the you know the gun. Um, you can select a lot of the guns have selectable fire modes like burst fire, single fire, or fully automatic. Um, you got a ton of different games. Um, he's you got a pistol, you got uh, sidearm, or uh, you got um, like SMGs. You got auto assault rifles. You have heavy machine guns. You got grenades. Like there's all that stuff, right? So it's like you, you get to build your loadout just like you would in a Call of Duty game. You go in and then you're running around. This uses locomotion, so you actually use the the touchpad on the controller, or if you have a Oculus Rift controller, the the joystick to move around. Like you can only move forward and then you aim with your head, which really? I believe, yeah, which I believe is how they get they they keep you from getting nauseous because you can totally move around in this game like a first person shooter and it causes like no nausea. So like, it's really a phenomenal game. It's, you know, it's, it's very small. It's very indie. It's, you know, it's got some, like, if you watch my video, you'll see some janky animations, you know? And like, if people like move their wrists weird or like their controllers are just hanging off by the straps, you'll see their wrists are all like, you know, like, the, <laughs> but it, <laughs> yeah. it totally doesn't distract any away from the fun. It is really cool. And then I found another game called uh, Bullets and More. It's another game available on Steam. Both of these games are available on Steam. Both of them, I believe, are available for Oculus and Rift. Bullets and More might be just... Uh, I said Oculus and Rift. Both <laughs> of them sure are available did? for Oculus and for Vive. Bullets might be just a Vive game. But this game is more like... Uh, it, it's a similar playing game. Um, however, it allows people to create their own levels... So what people have done is like created like levels like with like you know in your bedroom where like you know you're you're a little tiny like figurine but like the bunk bed is like gigantic and stuff like that. And that's a lot right. of fun. But Onward yeah. is definitely it's a it's kind of the dream. It's like the first step to the dream of being in that game, right? It's like n you're not controlling your 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 Call of Duty character with a controller or a mouse and keyboard, you're actually in there controlling your character with your body. And it's it's absolutely stunning. It's really a fun game. I, I that, got a question for you. Yeah. I, I, I did watch a video. I was probably the, the second comment. I was really excited. I was driving home from work and uh, <laughs> watching this thing in, inside my van. And, and just it looked really incredible. I couldn't believe it that it looked so good to me for a VR game. Uh, my question is, do you think there's a possibility of this game maybe coming to consoles? There's really... I don't see any reason it couldn't be done on the uh, PlayStation. Um, the one limitation would be the... Movement. The, the 360... No, the, I think the movement would work fine, but the 360... Like, with... Because of the way the Vive is set up and the Oculus can be set up, you can you can be positioned in 360 degrees and you got perfect tracking on your controllers. Right, but with the PlayStation camera, it would probably be a bit right. of an issue. The PlayStation camera can only see you from the front. Um, so yeah. they might have a little issue with that. But because of the way you move, you just basically are hitting a button, go forward, or hitting a different button, go back, and then you steer with your head. Like it, that, would, that part would definitely work on the PlayStation controller. And... Um, holding the guns up, like doing all that stuff, that would all work on the PlayStation Move controllers. So there's no reason they couldn't at least, you know, do most of it with the on the PlayStation. Okay, because right. uh, I actually did a story this morning, yesterday, about Play Sony's new patent. Is there? They have some of those. I don't know what they're called because I don't have an HTC Vive, but Vive uses the boxes that you sit on your wall, right, and it shoots yeah, lasers the through your room. Yeah, mm -hmm. they have a patent for something like that for PlayStation VR, and it's That's pretty exciting. interesting news for me. I'm, I mean, I want better tracking for games like Brookhaven, which is an awesome game, but it really lacks when you turn around and there's enemies coming the opposite direction. So the idea of having something like that would be incredible. Possibly uh, we might see this on PlayStation. I'm really yeah. not the biggest PC guy, but my other question is for you. Uh, Brookhaven, how you though, like does it in good ways because you, you basically have a button that just says turn around 180 degrees. You're still yeah. facing the camera physically, but your character turns around 180 degrees. 
you know what? You just killed me because I hardly ever do it. I hardly <laughs> ever do that. And I always turn around. Yeah. To me, it's always exciting to look and see him coming. But yeah, that's a perfect way to play it. And I should probably try it again that way sometime very <laughs> soon. Uh, my other question for you is, how are you liking the HTC Vive's controls versus the Oculus Rifts? I saw the controllers there for the first yeah. time. I saw you unbox them, but they look bigger. and They're um, huge. It's gigantic. Um, and I put I put these white gel Looks like a on. sex toy. Hold on. That's a, <laughs> right? a ring in the middle. A long phallus. We don't have it? to go there. Okay, it's okay, crazy. okay. Look, oh, that's better. Oh, oh. Wow, Brian. Slow down there. And it's um, got a string just in case it gets lost. You can't pull it out. It's awesome. I had to <laughs> I had to put these white gel skins on it because I already marked up my ceiling trying to throw a grenade. <laughs> like I was doing like an overhand oh, really? toss with a grenade and I just like dragged the thing across the ceiling, <laughs> put a big mark on the ceiling with the controller. I'm like, you know what? Maybe I ought to get one of them gel skins. So at least I got like a white because <laughs> I got a white ceiling. I figured this won't leave a white mark. Uh -huh. yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, a white mark's all the over the I like the system. Oculus Rift controllers like a lot better. Like a lot better. Um, this has this kind of touchpad here, um, which, you know, I, you know, I've grown up with console controllers. I'd much rather have just a joystick instead of this touch controller, right? It just, yeah. I, I've gotten used to it and it, you know, it's, it's workable, but I let uh, the Oculus touch controller had the, the joystick, which I like better. Oculus touch controller is also more comfortable and doesn't feel so much like a wand, right? That's a default controller. This is what comes in the box. Yeah. Wow. Um, it's it's black. It's not white. This has like this gel skin on it. Like a cell phone would have like a skin on mm -hmm. it. Like you can see I could kind of peel it off. Like a condom, yeah. Um, it's it's big. What um, is what when I'm in game, I don't really I don't really notice it that much. It's got the trigger here. It's got these like grip buttons. So if you squeeze oh, the controller, sweet. you can grab stuff. Um, and then it's got a couple of buttons uh, above and below the touchpad. So... It's, so, it's a good controller. It's fine. It's not as good as the Oculus Touch controller, which is it, like a master class. Yeah, you told me like on Oculus, you could actually articulate the controller to do different things with different fingers. Yeah. Uh, this, this doesn't the, have – yeah, you can like – You can your, kind of on this. It doesn't have the degree of articulation because it does have the grip controller, so it can sense if you want to grip stuff. And then it, it's got a trigger, so it can sense if you're moving here. And then it can sense your thumb when you're touching the touchpad. Oh, so your index finger is on another sensor right there. Your yeah, oh, okay. But what about trigger. the finger next to it? There, That's another there, button there. There's uh, these grip buttons on both sides. Got you. And you kind of squeeze the controller to grab stuff. Mm -hmm. Does that make that's sense? Pretty, that, that's pretty cool too. Okay. Yeah. So in the on the Oculus controller, it's got these grip buttons are like analog, so it can sense like how far you're moving your fingers. And then the t the Oculus controller also feels like a controller. Like it has that grip like a controller would, but it's just broken into two halves. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just a better controller. Uh, the Oculus is a better controller. Um, but the trade-off is I really like the tracking with the Vive because it's got these two lighthouses in both corners of the room, and I just ha I don't have issues with tracking at all. Um, so so overall, the, the trade that you did was worth it. You're liking the HTC overall better than the Oculus Rift? For me, because I'm not, I'm not fucking with it all the time, <laughs> right? I'm playing games <laughs> instead of fucking with context. the thing. You know what I mean? It's like, it's, to me, it almost feels like the difference between a Mac and a PC. Everybody loves to, co to compare the Oculus to Macs because it's like this closed system and the Vive to PCs because it's a much more open system. Yeah, but for me, the reason I love Macs is because they just fucking work when you turn them on, as opposed to a PC, which is got like who the fuck knows what's gonna happen when you turn that thing on. <laughs> yeah, seriously, <laughs> right? And that's the problem I was having with the Oculus is just like, you know, I was having troubles getting the tracking to work, and then like to when when I really started researching like what is everything I need to get this thing to work a hundred percent of the time, it was gonna cost me another three hundred bucks. And I'm still going to be in the beta software, so it might not fucking work, right? Damn! <laughs> more money, more problems, man. Um, I, I got to say, like, if I'm comparing the two, the Oculus headset is more comfortable. However, there's more room for glasses wearers. If you wear uh, spectacles, there's more mm. room in the uh, Vive. Oh, uh, yeah. And the thing... The thing kind of uh, adjusts. You can't really see that. 
But, the, but you got you got the, the protector on that too. Yeah, I did. It, this adjusts this way, right? So the actual headpiece can adjust further, or further away or closer to your eyes. Yeah, depending on like how big your glasses are or whatever, like that. Um, it's bigger. It's heavier. The 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 strap isn't as comfortable as the Oculus, um, but you know I don't really care. I'm having a blast. Great, blast. man. Uh, well, we'll probably never see you again on traditional games. It seems like you're <laughs> moving further and further away, Briar. It's like that old friend you grew up with who got rich and moved out of the hood, and you you hear about him in their mansion. Yeah, that's you now with your <laughs> we HTC need to Vive. And Damn VR it, VR and Briar sold. He's he's gone forever. Well, Just, I gotta it. tell you. Um, aside from VR, I have actually reignited my passion for Destiny, which I know after two and a half years sounds fucking That's, crazy. Yeah. How does <laughs> that it's like, it's like, but... Sounds like getting remarried. <laughs> <laughs> remarried. Like remarried to the same woman, right? Yeah, the same woman. <laughs> so I do it again. found my love for her again. <laughs> but um, they released an update in Destiny that changed the way weapon ammo spawns. So there's a lot less shotguns in the Crucible right now. And to me, it's made the Crucible like a ton of fun because there's much more a focus on primary weapon gunfights right now. And I've been having a blast playing Destiny PvP like all week. It's been like I'm really excited to play Destiny right now. And that's this actually fun. makes me really, really happy to hear, believe it or not. It's probably been four or five episodes of the show since I've heard you even speak really about destiny so it's good that they pulled you back yeah it's been it's been the witcher you know it's been all these yeah. different games and uh, of course oculus hcc i'm happy you went back to your baby you know yeah, well, i'm really starting to look forward to destiny 2 again you know like it's <laughs> like that we're gonna start hearing news about that within the next couple of months it's gonna be an exciting hear, summer it's gonna be 83 it, 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 it'll be d3 yeah I think oh, 100 it'll, it'll, it'll be before that events. too i think we'll hear something I mean, that's going to be big news. And, of course, that's going to pull everyone who ever loved Destiny right back into the fold. Damn it. It's like the Godfather. <laughs> they tried to get me out. And now they pulled me back in type of stuff. I'm excited, though, man. I can't wait to see what they do with uh, PlayStation, PlayStation Pro, and Xbox One, and possibly Scorpio with Destiny 2. It's going to be insane. It's going to be really, really nice. Cool. All right. So, yeah. Rob Scal, what have you been playing this week? Yes, sir. All right. I've been playing two things this week. For Honor, because that came out, got that on launch, been playing it with friends a lot. I have good and bad things to say. I might as well just get into it. Talk to me about the campaign. Start with the campaign, because that's my biggest question about that game. For sure. So I'd say overall, the campaign is basically like the multiplayer. You know, you're kind of on these one-on-one duels. You might fight multiple people at the same time, but it's got a story behind it. The story is okay. You know, there's three separate campaigns. You play as the knights first, then the viking, then the samurai. They all kind of blend together. It's this cool... The cinematics are really cool. That's probably one of my favorite things about it. The story itself is kind of not there, but the cinematics are cool. Uh, The campaign probably took, I'd say, five to eight hours. It's mainly the same kind of things, but they did mix it up, so that was really nice. Overall, I'd say it's good, but it was kind of repetitive after a while, right? Like it just kind of got boring, but I still enjoyed it. Is it so? My fear was is that we'd be playing single player. They'd add a bunch of cutscenes in, but we the single player would basically be the multiplayer maps with like AI. Well, the maps are actually pretty different in the single player. There's actually a lot of different stuff, which I appreciated. And it's still very fun. I did enjoy it. All right. What was the second game you played, uh, Robbie? Tell me about the multiplayer a little bit in For Honor. Yeah, this is where the game frustrates me a little bit. Because I like the game. I love the combat system. I think it's something that's easy to understand, right? You have all your different stances. You have your different characters and different move sets. It's easy to understand, difficult to master. And it, there's all these different counters to each other. The game's very fun. The net code in this game is garbage. It is... I can't even tell you guys how many games you get disconnected, how many times connecting with friends people get randomly dropped. Like, for no reason. The network in this game is absolute garbage. It's terrible. It really isn't good at all. And the other part of it that's frustrating, too, is that this game also has one of the worst examples of microtransactions I've ever seen. (laughs) Let me tell you guys about Steel. Let's get into this shit, because this is, like, a new level of bad for Ubisoft. (laughs) All right, let's hear it. Because 
Basically, the price is on steel. You know, it's an in-game currency. You can buy it from anywhere from $5 to $100. You get a random amount of currency. The worst part about it is that after every match, you earn it so slowly that I'm it's like... I'm surprised because I felt like I was earning it faster in the betas. They must have slowed it down. Yeah, really? because it just feels like all the time there's all these expensive character skin packs and all this stuff. I feel them grabbing up my wallet all the time, and I don't like that. You know what I mean? Like, you have to respect your customers. You can't nickel and dime them. And this is one of the worst examples I've ever seen. So, so is this a microtransaction steal? Is this for something that you actually need to play the game better? or are You, you have to buy do... everything. Everything you buy is with steel. Every the characters, single thing. Like, all your weaponry and your armor is all upgradable. And yep. you can get better stats. Like, you can, you can actually, like... Basically, you get more health or attack power or stamina. Yep. You get better uh, based on gear. the armor you get. And if you're, you know, basically, it sounds like it's pay to win. It is. And you open weapon packs, too, and get more powerful stuff. And, of course, that all costs steel, too. In addition to these character skin packs, which cost something like 46,000 steel. You know how much that costs in real money? About $60. Whoa! For one pack. <laughs> and there's a lot of them. I was it's really bullshit. considering it's getting this game. <laughs> It's absurd. It's almost disgusting. He's waving his wand. <laughs> Briar, I'm glad you're laughing at it. It's it's crazy. It's stupid. <laughs> Sounds like you got it's stupid. He it's got shafted. So he just showed bad. Me. <laughs> oh man, that it's, sounds rough. Well, I mean, you rough. can get this stuff by playing the game. It's just gonna take you like a really long time. It sounds like I can't even imagine how long it would take to actually get forty six thousand coins, and then there's like ten more of those packs. How, how many hours have you put into the game? 25 30 hours right, yeah, i have been playing quite, quite a, a lot so, it's fun it is fun so how much how much how, how many of these coins have you earned in that 25 to 30 hours it depends because there are of course daily contracts you complete that earns you more steel even then at the most you'll get 300 steel from one of them which is still not very much <laughs> so even from the contracts, it's like you still don't get very much. And they're like, okay, but you can buy all this steel and then you can buy all this stuff. It's like, no, just stop. In 20 hours, have you, got, have you played enough to buy one of those packs? No, not even close. Not even half. <laughs> not even half. Jesus, serious? I think I've gotten 15,000 total. I doubt that. Like, <laughs> this is a joke. It's Gary's in chat, that riff not looking so expensive now, huh? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Gary, you're the man. Dude. <laughs> oh man, it's yeah, it, it's uh, it's a joke. It's a joke. It absolutely is. Yeah, man, I noticed that's... that about the netcode during the betas too, and I was hoping they'd fix it for the release. You know, that's why you do a beta, right? Is to try. You get dropped all the time, it. like you see on Twitter too. That's what happened to me as I was playing with JB Mega. We were having troubles just getting into a party together. Um, when I when I was playing, especially the closed beta. I was like watching people like teleport across my screen or you'd be about to finish a guy off, you know, like you got that yes, hammer coming down that dude's fucking dead. And then he's gone. And like, where'd he go? <laughs> oh shit. He's behind me sticking a fucking sword up my rear That's end. That's happened in the final <laughs> game too. It happens. And what happens too, is you'll get this major lag for like a minute straight and then you get disconnected. It's a pain in the ass. There is no for honor in prison rate, my friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Briar, that has happened to me quite a few times, though. Someone will be that in the middle of walking. Suddenly they're behind you and they're attacking you. I'm like, what the hell just happened? Yeah. They just, Can't like, react disappear. fast enough. Uh, that's, that's disappointing because I, I wanted to buy this game. Um, I was The only reason I hadn't bought it yet was actually because there's just so much shit right now to play. And, right. Yeah. You know, by, at the end of this month, we're getting uh, uh, Horizon, then Zelda at the beginning of the Mass month, Effect. and then Mass Effect at the end of March. It's like... When am I really going to play this? <laughs> like, right. Am I just going to throw 60 bucks at this game and never play it? Like, you know, Far Cry 4? <laughs> I wouldn't have bought it for full price. The only reason I even got it was because you could trade in two games to get it free, which I thought was actually a pretty good trade-in deal. I never trade stuff at uh, GameStop. This was a good one, though, so that's why I went for it. And you know what, guys? I'll tell you, I still like the game. Even after all this, there's something about it that keeps me coming back. I, I mean, don't know why. It's fun. It's fun. Yeah. It is. I mean, yeah, uh, maybe to be, to be totally, to be totally honest, Robbie, lots of people stay with you know others or in a relationship with a person who abuses them. They just, <laughs> you know, 
This is like a Ferrari. Yeah, it's like, oh, we gotta get him a phone people. number. Yeah. Like, I'm still staying with you. I'm still here a week later. I don't know why I'm doing this. I want out soon. <laughs> Maybe one day I'll just be like, change, I'm done. I swear. <laughs> We're over. I'm a yeah, different she's game. Not... <laughs> I stopped trying to take money from you every week. I'm sorry. <laughs> I made up. Oh, man. I mean, I don't know. It's like that, that French Ubisoft. kiss you get. You wake up, you check your wallet, your money's gone. You look over and, and you see that game just sitting there smiling at you. And all your, money, a crazy all your money's underneath the game. Yeah, this game is a crazy ex-girlfriend. There's so many great qualities, but there's so much crazy shit you remember. And you're like, I'm glad I never went back to her. <laughs> I'm rough. glad I set I'm up an never... abuse for honor helpline. <laughs> right. I'm just happy I never met the crazy bitch. Uh, you know, <laughs> the game totally is done, done, man. Like, I, well, Hopefully... What they what they do is they learn from player disfati- disfati- dissatisfaction. Dissatisfaction. The fuck. You can't say dissatisfaction. Dis- is it even a word? Dis- <laughs> dissatisfaction. It's dissatisfaction. Well, That's canon. <laughs> yeah, he has the glossary up there. Hopefully they learn from player disfati- <laughs> I already fucked it up. <laughs> <laughs> say it for Robbie. They a <laughs> fix the netcode because the netcode is terrible, and b pull an evolve and just pull all the. Uh, Pull all the uh, microtransactions out, you know, or at, like you can leave them in, but at least make it rewarding to play the game. Like, you know, if you put 20 hours in, you should be re- be rewarded pretty big. That's I crazy. Agree, I think the solution is not necessarily to tone down the microtransactions. Just make them feel like I don't have to buy them. Make the rewards Increase a little bit the better. Reward yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That makes they a lot need of sense. to do that. All right. What's the second game you were playing, Robbie? Uh, Resident very... Evil 7 DLC. Oh. Oh, nice! Really, the second, really cool. the oh. second batch of that. Yep. Okay, so what's that like? So there's three episodes again. The first one, you know, I'm going to be very careful not to spoil it here. Basically, I'm going to keep it simple. You play a game of blackjack against another person, but in Resident Evil style, it's pretty messed up. That's all I'm really going to say. It's super fun though. There's a couple different survival modes. You have to beat like ten people in a row. I have not been able to do that. It's very tough, but it's blackjack. It's really cool. Uh, the second thing is called Daughters. This is basically, you, this is really cool. You play as Zoe, the Baker family's daughter, just before they find Evelyn, and when they get basically taken over and go crazy, you see that happen, which is really cool to play through that. It's fairly short, but it was a really cool experience. And then the final thing in the DLC is this mini game called Jack's 55th Birthday. And this is like Resident Evil not even taking itself seriously. It's hilarious. Basically, you have to bring Jack this food. He's wearing like this party hat and a clown nose. And you have to go run around finding him food. And all these morbids are coming out of the ground. Meanwhile, there's like this party music playing. And like they shoot confetti out of him when you kill him and stuff like that. And you get seconds off your timer because you have a limited amount of time to go get the food and bring it back to them. It's a pretty basic mode. It's really fun and doesn't take itself seriously though. So overall I've been enjoying it quite a bit. It's good. Sounds very interesting, man. I can't wait till I get time to play that. All right. So coming to me now, uh, I actually ran into an old friend on my way home from work Thursday night. Do you guys remember Resident Evil 4? Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. There was a guy in that game called The Merchant. Thanks, babe. And I had to refill my beer. Um, the Merchant. I saw him at a gas station. I was going in there to get gas. He turned around and looked at me and said, Hello, stranger. I said, Holy shit. <laughs> and and he, he, he opened up his coat and he had all this shit. He had jewelry, games. Believe it or not, he had video games. And he had some other knickknacks and doodads, car chargers and stuff like that. And he was just selling them, you know, at the gas station. Said he, you know, came up with a deal and he was trying to earn some money. He had some really new games and some games that I really wanted. And so I pretended like I didn't. But I ended up giving, giving this guy $100. Uh, and I got five games from him. The games were, and I think I got like every good game he had. He had Final, Fa- Final Fantasy 15, Hitman. I, I, I think I, t- I tweeted you guys about this. Hitman, he had Deus Ex, Mankind Divided. Uh, he had Mafia 3 and something else. And he was selling them all for 25 a piece. And so I was like, well, if I get five, can I get five for 100? Mm-hmm. He was like, oh, yeah, man, you can. You can. I'm looking at the games. They look legit. And so I went to the ATM and bought these games. Of course, I brought them home. I'm in the middle of playing Tomb, Rise of the Tomb Raider on my PlayStation 4 Pro. Are you making which, this fucking story? What the fuck is going on here, Beasley? <laughs> what? Yeah. I'm like, telling you. Some, I'm dude, t- you, some dude opened up his jacket. 
No, no. That, <laughs> <laughs> that that part was not true. It was a, it was a, it was a it was a guy with a bag. He was at, at the Kroger gas station, and uh, he you know he was walking around selling movies and shit like that. And uh, he opened up his bag and I saw some games in there. I was like, "That's PS4," and he was like, "Yeah." And I was like, "How much? You know, how much are the games?" He's like, "Well, twenty five, some are 30. And I'm looking, and you know, you, you don't let anybody know you're excited. I got a heart on when I saw Final Fantasy 15, bro. I literally I almost poked him. You know, he just um, stole these from somebody, right? I, like he literally just like came out the window of somebody's house. <laughs> oh, karma. Uh, but yeah, I, I looked and I was like, next oh, time you're well. at that gas station, the shit is all going to be your stuff. <laughs> he followed I mean, you home. He's like, oh, I know this guy's a gamer. I'm going to steal all his junk. <laughs> but I got all these games for this guy for a hundred dollars. And he told me he'll be, he's up there every couple of weeks. I've never seen him before. Yeah, Every time I rob a house, I come over here and try to sell it. Yeah, he had look. He had <laughs> car chargers. Okay. He, had, like, he had an iPhone for sale. I oh, mean, so he robbed it. stuff out of cars too. Yeah. <laughs> Let this be a lesson. Lock your shit. Um, but yeah, I, I brought this stuff home. My wife was like, "Holy shit, these are games you've really been excited about and wanting to play." But I was already in the middle of Rise of the Tomb Raider, which I gotta say is so close to being as good, if not better, than Uncharted Four to me. It's incredible, especially playing on the PS4. That you know, it just looks so good. Um, so I've been in the middle of that, and I put probably an hour or two into each of these other games. So I've got you know limited use out of them. Deus Ex: Mankind Divided. Don't like that game. The control is extremely strange, and it just doesn't make sense to me. You run with the triangle button, and when you tap the R1 button, you jump up against walls and hide. It's kind of you know cover-based shooter type stuff. I'm like, I can't get around this control. So I didn't like that. Mafia Three is fucking incredible, and I'm not, that. I'm not really, you know, into the Grand Theft Auto type of games anymore. I think that I was there when the ship sailed in, and when it passed, it passed me. I mean, I, I remember yeah. really loving Grand Theft Auto, the early ones, uh, like on PS2, but one, you know, four and five, and all this stuff started. I know they're amazing. It just doesn't interest me. But this story and these characters seem so grounded and so real. Uh, you're playing in 1967 New Orleans, and it just seems like there's so much gravity and so much racial tension, and it just seems like it's tangible and, and palpable uh, situations happening. So I think I'm really going to spend a lot more time in that game, and it's beautiful. It really is beautiful. When you look at the character models, again, the character models seem like they're on par with something like Uncharted. Not as good, but like the main character, wow. And the, the voice acting, all this, just really, really, uh, you know, above uh, the standards of what we're seeing nowadays. The game that I haven't really got a chance to play yet is Final Fantasy 15. I know you guys are going to ask, BC, aren't you a Final Fantasy? Yes, I am, goddammit. <laughs> and, and Robbie, one of your friends asked me that in my YouTube channel. Okay? <laughs> Did they really? I said, but BC, aren't you a Final I said, yes, I am, you fuck. Are you really a Final Fantasy fan? I mean, yes, that I was am. it, yeah. You didn't yeah. support the developer at all. You basically... <laughs> Basically, you weren't Dude, working on day one. Paid, I totally paid, I paid you on day one. <laughs> you weren't there. No excuses. You guys are really going to do this to me? Huh? Uh -uh. <laughs> it's too much fun to not do. <laughs> I paid we love some you, money. though. I paid some money. You but, um, paid the money to the guy who stole it from somebody who <laughs> paid for the copy. <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't ask him shit. All right? <laughs> Look, how do you know he just didn't get put out of his house and he put all his final belongings Inside a black leather bag. Huh? He does that every two weeks, does he? <laughs> <laughs> Please don't support criminals, but if you don't ask, then they don't tell, okay? God damn it. And so that's been my week. I've just been kind of jumping around from game to game, uh, really enjoying them. Uh, but like I said, again, Deus Ex, Mankind Divided, don't like that game. Rise of Tomb Raider is completely amazing. That's the one I probably put the most time in. Of course, I've gotten pretty far in that game on the PC version. Uh, but again, I was trying to play with mouse and keyboard. And my big, I feel like the rock man from the never ending story, my, these hands, I just can't do it. Uh, but playing on PS4 has just been really, really amazing. Uh, and Kate's been still on the disc every now and then playing it as well. So, Have you ever thought about getting maybe an external keyboard? Does that help at all? Uh, it might, you know, I, but Briar, I'm, I'm trying to resist that change. Uh -huh. Some of us, some of us have to, to actually stay, you know, console gamers. Mm -hmm. Some of us have to say it and mean it. God damn it. You know, <laughs> my, I guess you could play on the mouse and keyboard. Nova. She plays games with mouse and keyboard. She's six. Minecraft. And I don't, yeah. And I don't yeah. get it. Briar. 
I don't get it. Nobody taught her what WASD means, but she knows. Minecraft she know the is the game so that well. is killing consoles, right? Like the younger generation, I feel like, is all growing up to be PC gamers. Like all these kids that got hooked on Minecraft when they were like five, six years old are going to grow up and not one of them is ever going to be a console game. Oh, they're learning how to use the WASDs at such a young age. Right? Yeah. God, yeah. I mean, that's why I got to keep her grounded. She has Vita and PSP and yeah. PS3. Just so she could always fall back if the computer just happens to get stepped on by daddy someday. Is it a Windows machine? Yes, it is. Oh, it'll die on its own. Don't worry about it. <laughs> 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 you know what? You're probably right. You know? I mean, there's so many Windows. I think we have eight laptops in this house. So, you know, if it does Damn. come up. You know, well, I have a lot of computers. Well, every time I upgrade, I don't get rid of the the old one. It you just goes hand into them down. A, no, it just goes into my lap like a lab cap, laptop case and slides under my bed. So under my bed, it looks like you know a drug deal. Like if you go in there and you just look under there and you see all these cases and you expect it to be dope. I hope that dude at the gas station went watch this podcast. Like, oh, right. He's got like eight eight laptops listen, in there. Listen, <laughs> listen, dude. I'm gonna tell you like this. I'm prepared. I got so- swords and guns. <laughs> You're I got a fucking... over the head with your keyblade. <laughs> No, I use the Buster Sword. And when the ambulance comes, they can pick up the two pieces. You gotta, you better put a gel skin on that Buster Sword, because I think when you swing that thing, it's just going to get stuck in your ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> it probably would, too. Probably One minute. Hold on. Let me just get this out of here. <laughs> just stay right there. This is going to be awesome. Guys, don't move. Yeah. I told don't you guys a story. I told you guys a story about my old neighbor in the apartment I used to live in who came outside. It was three or four guys that came to his house to assault him. Him and they were talking shit about his girlfriend. It's a young guy, like 21 years old. And when they were all out there and, you know, I'm sitting in my living room hearing all this commotion outside my front door. And I open up the door and this guy's got a butcher knife. This is my neighbor or my neighbor's son. This nice. guy goes on a stabbing spree, Briar. I swear to you, he well, tried like to kill me. Kitchen knife? Guys. Like one of the big ass kitchen knives? Butcher knife. Now, the thing is, you know, Kate, she's pregnant. I open the door and say, hey, 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 guys, there's families here. You guys need to go. I'm in between these guys saying, man, it's not that important. You guys need to talk about this on the phone. And, you know, of course, these are hood cats. They're really trying to get them. And this this guy's mother's outside, my neighbor. She's bleeding from her arm. So her oh, son gosh. accidentally cut her, right? And I'm thinking, fuck, I probably should get out of here. At that moment, I look back and see Kate look at me and walk back in the house as this guy starts stabbing all these men. I swear to you, he stabbed them all numerous times. I put my hands up my head and said, my God, he's killing them. And I just waited until they all slowly started falling down into like a giant mound of human flesh, getting away from the blade. And then they went to their car. The police got called. And after the police came uh, and they talked to him, they got sent to jail. The neighbor did not because they came to his house. And then I walked in my house and I grabbed my my, uh, buster sword and I walked out there and I said, I should have brought this out here. And he looked at that sword. He said, God damn, I would have went in. They would have never got stabbed. So I could have saved those guys' lives with my buster sword. But I was too late. Uh, I'm glad you moved, man. Wow. <laughs> I'm really glad you moved. Is shit like that's happening? Hey, man, oh, look. Oh, my God. Listen, I moved down here from Ohio, sight unseen. I didn't know anybody. I didn't know where I was going. It looked nice in the fucking pictures. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And then you get here, and there's Waka Flocka walking, and you can see everybody's underwear. You're like, there's can no I get one a here. Definition on Waka Flocka. It's uh, the, the <laughs> I've African never heard Ameri- that term. Af- African Ameri- look, look, that's what my sister said to me on the phone. You don't want to move there. There's Waka Flockas everywhere, and I was like, what the fuck is that? And now I understand. <laughs> is that like a bird? <laughs> like a beautiful, no. like colored no, bird? It sounds like a it, new type of flamingo Waka or something Flocka. to me. <laughs> Waka Flocka is actually a, a black rapper, but Waka Flockas are his ilk. They're young black men with dreadlocks who don't believe in belts and believe they should all wear neon colored underwear that you need to see. Oh, Jesus. Yes. So all the pants come up to the inner the inner thigh. They all, all wear pink, pink or, or neon purple underwear, and they think it's cool. And more than likely, there's a blunt behind one of their ears. Pink and underwear why- are cool. Okay. I'll, I'll <laughs> that. That's not bad. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that's been my week of uh, God, very, very, very like a game. fucking you're in a video game down there. <laughs> it sounds like it. <laughs> So we got a little bit of news this week. Actually, we got quite a bit. Robbie, you want to get us started? And stop thumping your keyboard, son. Woo, you guys ready? 
No way. No. Okay. All right. I'm so, gonna go anyways. Yes, I'm ready, Robbie. All right. Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild will officially have a season pass. This might be controversial. It will cost 19.99 US dollars and contain two separate content packs the first of which will be released spring 2017 and it includes quote a new cave trial or new cave trials challenge uh a hard mode and a new feature for the end game map the second Wait, content hard pack, mode? i don't know yeah higher difficulty which you're paying for apparently hmm. that's weird um second contact pack will be released this fall and will include a new dungeon a new original story and additional challenges and none of these can be purchased separately either that's also the other thing is that apparently it won't be sold separately how much is it Damn. 20 20 dollars oh that's not that bad yeah but some of this is kind of weird like a hard mode a that's, that's for weird. the map and so a hard 80 mode? bucks total for the game plus all the dlc like it basically a season pass I, yeah, I mean that's not super expensive, right? That's I don't know. That's weird. Yeah, I mean that's it's weird. an it's an official season pass. It's probably one of the cheaper season passes I've ever seen. So, season one of Nintendo's usually... first attempts to become a modern company. Well, here you go. They do it well, in a half-assed, weird way. Good luck. They still don't have voice chat. But they got about, season I got pass. Voice chat. You got it right here. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, that's hey, Nintendo's man, official play, voice. Man? Yeah. Give me a call so we can get together and, and party hey, up. Voice chat. My God. <laughs> nice chat. Welcome to like 2000 where we had cell phones. But, you know, okay. Well, for me, right, I, I if a game is enjoyable and it's something that I follow, then I'll usually buy the DLC or season pass. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think that that's, you know, pretty standard for any gamer out there. Uh, but the, the thing that's kind of holding me back is, you know, of course, that guy got murdered and, and killed his girlfriend and himself in front of my GameStop, which halted me that day from getting my pre-order. And of course, since then, it's been impossible to find one. Uh, and actually, I'm not really that sad about it because The Legend of Zelda is the only game on the Switch that really interests me. And I don't know how I feel about buying a $300 handheld slash, you know, game console uh, for just one game, knowing that once that game is completely beat, there's nothing in the pipeline that's really exciting until maybe the end of the year for me. So yeah. that that's how I feel about it. I know a lot of people are going to say, Blasphemy Beastly, it's The Legend of Zelda. And I know Legend of Zelda is yeah, awesome. You play it on the Wii U. You're right. I mean, I exactly. And what's the point? It's you're totally right about that, Beastly. I couldn't agree more. Like people really have to think about it. It's one game. Eventually, you're gonna beat it, or you're gonna be done with it. And, and then, then you bought a console for now? it, right? Yeah. How do you feel, Briar? You pre-ordered this thing. I mean, is is it? I'm not gonna lie. It, like I pre-ordered it. I'm still planning on getting it, but I'm not that excited about it. I'm excited to play Zelda, but I'm not that excited for the Switch itself. Yeah. Um. I, that, you know, I don't know what the virtual console situation is going to be. That that could turn me around because that, you know, if it's got a really cool virtual console thing happening, that could be a lot of fun. I, I still don't know. Like, are the games I purchased on the Wii U going to transfer over to the Switch? I doubt it for some reason. Oh god, that like would they suck. Said it if it. Was I think true. we did talk about that. I'm pretty sure they said there's not backwards compatibility with the Wii U. There isn't. Yeah, that's but that's not bad. Yeah, I mean, it's not backwards compatibility with the Wii U if it's a virtual console. It's compatibility with virtual console. And Nintendo is on that, you know, in the hood, we say they on that bullshit. And, <laughs> that bullshit. And, and that's what it is. You know, that's that's really messed up the way that they're conducting themselves when it comes to their network and really the ability. Like, I bought a few virtual console games in my life, and I'd love it for, for it to actually be transferable to the new Nintendo console. It's not like you need new proprietary hardware. It's actually it's just an, an emulated application. piece of software that can. Yeah, we still don't know that, do we? Whether the virtual console goes over. Did they say anything? That's, that's what Brad, just, that's what, talking, that's what about talking about. <laughs> what are you they mean? haven't said anything. Yeah, you're right, though. Jeez, like, how do we not know that? I, I feel know. like I feel like if it's gonna work the way we want it to, they would have said it's gonna work the way we want it to. The fact that they're like, remaining silent means that we're fucked. Yeah, I think you're right. Honestly, Sadly, yeah, I think you're right. Nintendo has actually spoke on this thing. I've gotten less and less excited, and that's honestly the truth. I think if they didn't say anything since that commercial, they probably would have fifty percent more excited fans. That's the way I feel. I, I feel like after you know they actually came out and talked about it and did less explaining than they needed to, and more explaining on shit that they definitely didn't need to. They lost a lot of, you know, peaked interest was all diminished after that. And I think they really screwed themselves with that. They just, they need to have more games, to be totally yeah. honest. They need heavy hitters. We'll see what happens. I mean, 
of course it's going to be successful because they're going to release 20 of them on release day and, and drive up the desire and want and need of people right, to buy them. Yeah. And so yeah. it's going to be a success. And Nintendo is great at marketing, except for the Wii U. All right, so continuing on, Call of Duty developer Infinity Ward has experienced a round of layoffs for around 20 people due to the lower-than-expected sales of Infinite Warfare. What is that? Who would have thought? Isn't that weird news? Like 20 people. That's not a lot of people, I would imagine. In oh, yeah. Infinity for that studio, War. that's pretty small. Anyway, but doesn't it still... just feel like, like punishment? Like you guys what? fucked up and here's your punishment. The game was the number one selling game of last year in the United States and this still happened. Like... Who- who programmed this way. section? Who programmed this section of this stage? Oh, sir, it was the twenty people in the back there. Really? Have them come see me. Fire All these motherfuckers are fucking fired. <laughs> Have you seen this part of the stage, <laughs> sir? It wasn't my fault. Get out! And then they're calling. They're calling, they're calling GameStop and calling all these news outlets to let them know that. The 20 of them have been ousted from the corporation. It's bad wow. when anybody gets laid off. But 20 people to me is yeah, that sucks because. Infinite you know, War, it's a great studio. They get a lot of shit, and they did make missteps in Infinite Warfare, but I thought the campaign of that game was incredible. There were still things about it I liked a lot. And it's sad. Like, it's not good when people lose their jobs. So, you know, they'll come back, but... I'm interested. Kind of sad news. What is it, usually May or April when they start revealing the next Call of Duty? Late April, early May. Yeah, typically. That'll be interesting to find out uh, well, what they're going to do this time around. Yeah. Going back in time, baby. It's going back, back to its in roots. time. Back in time. Yeah. That was a call back to, uh, to uh, Back to the back Future. Back to the Future. Gonna go back yes. in time. All right, so a new Reddit... Dun, 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 dun. Shut up, son. A new- <laughs> I love that movie. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> shut up, son. I love those movies. I can't... <laughs> shut up. <laughs> a new Reddit continue. post... A new Reddit post may reveal the internal specs of the Nintendo Switch following very close to a digital foundry post from late last year. The console CPU appears to be a quad-core ARM Cortex-A57 with a maximum speed of 2 GHz, while the GPU is a Maxwell-based NVIDIA chip featuring 256 CUDA cores, a 1 GHz maximum speed, and 1 teraflop of processing power. The console will have a 4 GB of onboard RAM. So it's not great... It's okay. That power's okay for this kind of system. It's not horrible, four, but... Four gigabytes of RAM for a portable system is really... That's great. That's really good as far as RAM goes. And True. see, I'm not, I'm not really the PC guy, so, I mean, a lot of this other PC language to me is like speaking Spanish. All I can yeah. say is uno, dos. No Pascal architecture. I, mean, I didn't expect that, this, though. We kind of already knew this, right? Like... We, yeah. we we basically knew this thing was going to be less powerful than like a Xbox One or a PS4, a little bit more powerful than a uh, Wii U. It's really about the form factor, the fact that you take it with you. Uh, it's just not that. It's not you know the powerhouse that some people were expecting. What it is, it's a you know this hybrid of a portable system and a console. Right. So and for like, a handheld, yeah, it's not bad, but. The thing is, it's technically really a home console, too, so this is... I don't know. Listen, Nintendo makes games that horrible. look fucking fabulous on whatever hardware they have at the time. They so, sure do. God, you know, they we're going to be playing Breath of the Wire and we're Wild on a Wii U or on a Switch, and we're going to be blown well, away by it. you, you got to keep in mind that like Mario That's Kart true. Mario Kart on the Wii U was it graphically looked as good as anything we saw on the PS4 and the Xbox One. And you know that the Wii U is like shit compared to the, the, the PS4 and Xbox One when it comes to actual the hardware and the system. So Nintendo, man, the way that they develop their games is really amazing. And I'm excited to see what they make with this thing. I mean, the, the thought of having a Wii U on the go is exciting to me, you know? So just to be able to take those kind of games, Bayonetta 2, Smash Brothers, and actual, you know, console quality on the go, to me, that's exciting. So the big brother of that is going to be even better. And I think it's going to work out, but we just need games. That's right. really Nintendo's biggest problem right now is that they don't have any games that are really exciting people. There's nothing, literally nothing besides possibly Mario at the end of the year. You're right. Yeah. I am totally. excited to play Zelda. Oh, yeah. Well, everybody's excited to play Zelda. I mean, I, I will. I'm ex- they, they, they have expanded the virtual console to include GameCube games on this, right? Mm-hmm. That's kind of exciting to me because that I is really, great. There are a few GameCube games that I really like. You know, it'd, it'd be fun to play uh, the Metroid Prime games again. It'd be fun to play. Uh, okay. So, yeah, Metroid Prime. Smash Brothers Melee. <laughs> He really thought about it. His eyes rolled. Mm, yep, that's the only one. Right. <laughs> Resident Evil 4, I love. That came out in the GameCube. But I like the oh. Wii version better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually have that too. 
So speaking of Resident Evil, Resident Evil 7 was the top selling game for the month of January, according to NPD. Are you guys surprised by this? All I've been hearing is this, that Resident Evil did really well, but it really underperformed when compared to Resident Evil 5 and Resident Evil 6. That again. Resident Evil 7 was the top selling game for the month of January, according to NPD. How many copies? Robbie? You put the, Sorry, you put I was the news. Struck. Um, <laughs> uh, I think it was they shipped, I want to say, Two and 4, a half million million? Copies, 4 million copies, and they sold what? around 3. Well, that's which was fucking actually great. less than five and Resident six. Evil 5 and 6. Yeah, and, and it's a tragedy that it, it uh, Resident Evil 6 outsold Resident Evil 7. This game's Re- way better. A mile this is, better. This is the best Resident Evil since Resident Evil 4. Hmm. Yeah, easily. It's, Definitely. And the thing is, now people are speculating that since it underperformed compared to Resident Evil 5, which is better than Resident Evil 6, but they both really suck compared to previous Resident Evil games, that Capcom may go back to its old strategy of giant bulging biceps punching incredibly uh, brittle rocks. You know, the, the real horror aspect of this game does turn people off. You know, that's the thing. Like, people, like, look at this game and say, it looks great, I'd love to play it, but... I don't like scary games. And you know what you say to those people? Donald Trump is the president now. Put that fucking headset on. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you right? say. Good answer. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Trying to make America great again. Put it on. That's what you say to those people. I mean, uh, I think Resident Evil's great. I got to get back to it. Pre show, I told you guys the reason I haven't played it is because I've been kind of lazy since I bought my Pro. I haven't uploaded my save to the cloud. Yeah, and so that's the thing. Stop. Every time I look at it on the pro, it just says start a new game. I'm like, no. So I gotta no, go. We're not I, gotta, doing that. <laughs> I gotta go all the way around the corner and upload to the cloud, and I'll get back into it. But continuing on, a new video posted this week shows off the Nintendo Switch's UI and operating system with the system activation and profile creation screens as well. According to Nintendo, early Switch systems were stolen by employees of a distributor and were illegally resold online. That's shitty for them. Did you guys see the video? No. Explain. So basically it shows the whole, like they even showed when you boot up the system for the first time, you know, the startup screen, create a profile. It's pretty standard stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, The UI kind of looks like the Wii U's, but it's a little different. And there's a couple other features in it too. Like there was something about you could change like the theme of the console or whatever. And there was a bunch of stuff. Like there's a lot of small things in here. It just kind of stinks, though, that they got out early like this and then they were, you know, illegally resold. Don't do illegal things. Why would you want to do that? Don't yeah, do that. Yeah, beastly. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, beastly. Why would you do that? Hey, I was I was helping out a brother in need, okay? <laughs> you weren't. <laughs> God damn it. That's, listen, it's called perspective. Okay. You were encouraging more crimes to be committed. <laughs> the brother in need is the guy who just got robbed, Beastly. <laughs> You're what's wrong with America, Beastly. Oh my god. No way. Shit. I feel so guilty. <laughs> no, you <laughs> <Like> don't. Light- <laughs> You're like, oh, whatever. I don't care. I don't think you feel guilty at all. <laughs> uh. <laughs> New concept art supposedly from the cancelled Sony Santa Monica sci-fi project has appeared online. The game was said to be in development for around three years before it was officially cancelled, although the yeah. game still, to this day, has never been acknowledged by Sony. Fuck! This is That's- the dopest concept art. It is like Mass Effect meets, like, Horizon. It's really cool. I looked through a lot of these images. I don't know if it is that game or not. It's dope, though. It was well, really cool. Maybe that was the only cool part about it was the concept art, because they worked on it for three years and it got shafted. Obviously, something didn't work. So, come on, Santa Monica. You guys Over are very ambition. I think that's likely what it could have been, you know? You make a sci-fi game, they probably went pretty ambitious with it. So, if they didn't start oh, this well. game, we'd probably have a God of War 4 right now. More than likely, we'd have it. It would have probably already been out. Isn't that coming out this three- year? Yeah, but they wasted three years making a game that doesn't exist. Well, things get shut down. That's not their fault. That's the publisher's decision. That's not theirs. You're only saying that because you're still supporting that game. You know, you got to give... This game was never even confirmed to be official. This is just... There were so many rumors that they were working on a sci-fi game. This might be that concept art. Like, none of that's confirmed. Mm. You can't jump to conclusions on that. Yeah, like, this is just supposedly what they were working on. 
I was right, talking about. Boring. Let's move I was on. talking about For Honor. Right? <laughs> Thanks, <Brian. laughs> that's boring. Let's just do something else. Now, this is exciting news. I did a whole story about this, and to me, this is possible possible news of PlayStation's new new handheld. Sony has filed a patent this week for a possible new handheld, striking heavy resemblance to the Nintendo Switch. Oh yeah, it looks just like it, and then the halves of it are like DualShock controllers, basically. Yeah. It, it looks really very, very similar to the Nintendo Switch. And uh, all Sony has to do is release two games and they'll have one up on Nintendo. Do you, do you guys think, think they're going to do I'd another handheld? do like a PlayStation 4 that's a portable system. I think <laughs> that be. That, Are they going to do another handheld, that, though? Right. I don't you know. Think that's, they fucked it up every that's... other time they did it. Like, why? <laughs> well, look, I, I mean, that's not even true. Because the PSP and the, the Vita are fucking cool systems. The problem is they just didn't sell enough to get developer support. Well, Vita right. sold twenty million. PSP sold over eighty. So, it's I mean, no, no, eighty no. million. No, 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 no. I'm thinking 3ds. I'm sorry. Just retract that last no. statement. Oh, I think PSP actually was seventy to eighty million. I'm pretty sure it was. No, it sold way. Well. I don't. Yeah, it did. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> There's Briar, no way that thing sold eighty million. It was decently popular. I knew a lot of people that had it. So. I'm gonna find out right now. I don't believe that for we a can, second. Let's go search it up. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty confident it was at least seventy million. Let, let's just check quick. I'm pretty confident you're full of shit. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> let's do this Thanks, parkour. Briar. <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do. There's nothing more interesting on a podcast than a bunch of guys yeah, this is, looking up this shit is 20, on Google. <laughs> okay. Look, they, here's the problem, right? Those numbers, the, yeah. the hardware is good on both the PSP and the Vita. The problem is there's no compelling reason to play, right? There's no games. That's the issue. So, PSP units sold worldwide 82 million as of November 2013. Ooh, Briar, you gotta you Told gotta you. eat that, son. I can't believe Told that. Told you. <laughs> I don't believe it. I still don't that believe number it. Was, the number was in my head for a reason. <laughs> I, I didn't either, it. but the reason I brought it up was because That's fake I searched news. this up a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> We're not even gonna get into that fake news thing. Jesus, That's let's not news. do that. Briar, stop it. <laughs> Fake news. You're all wrong, obviously, and I am right because it's fake news. Let's You're not bring some, up some of that CNN bullshit up. Yeah, fuck <laughs> CNN. Jake Tapper. Robbie is a Jake Tapper or Beastly Thoughts. Who? I, I believed you the whole time, Robbie. It was beastly. <laughs> oh, you did, did you? You were like, you're full of shit. And you're like, no, I believe you. I believed you the whole time. The whole time. <laughs> Come on, Brian. Come it on. was now beastly. Now you're wrong. No, you're, like, you were right you're the confused. whole time. You're confused. Brian, Brian, you going to throw me under the so. bus like that? We uh-huh. I was just did. the same fucking day. <laughs> I'm fucking calling you <laughs> out. Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> like, how does that even happen? If the thing sold 80 million, how come nobody was developing any games for it? People care about the PSP, man. People, I still... I, I really liked the PSP a lot. I had fun on that system. It was good. I I like the system. The hardware is great. There's no games. Uh, there there are games on it. They're just it's harder to play them with only one analog stick. But but the Vita fixed that. But they I also didn't bring any uh, of those. Yeah. games. Vita is what I'm talking about. Like I love the hardware. Yeah, especially yeah. the um, second version of it. I thought that was great. Right. Because like, it solved the comfort issues I had with the first version. Yeah. Someone brought up a really good point, actually, in chat. This guy, Waitos, he said 80 million PSP sold was due to easy to hack slash homebrew. That's true. A lot of people custom did that. Custom firmware. Custom firmware, guys. It was it was very amazing. Actually, I have two with custom firmware. Damn it. It makes it sound like I'm still breaking the law. That's a good I point. I thought you were going to say DJ Man brought up a really good point. Who said, did Breyer say he was hungover or still drunk? <laughs> <laughs> we'll never know. you got to rewind the oh, tape. Oh, yeah, I see that. Oh. <laughs> Briar, man, you gotta start chasing that shit. Briar, you chasing <laughs> you're definitely still drunk. Pretty sure. All right, what's our All next right, so, news? What was the news about the? Oh, the right. Do you really think Sony's going to do another one? Yeah, I don't think so, actually. Look, but th- who knows? Robbie, I'm gonna come to fucking Canada. Look. <laughs> Is that Sony, a threat? Whoa. No, okay. it's it's a promise. Look, Sony, uh, they need they need to do this. They have a very avid following of people who love their handhelds, even though the last one really didn't do too well. I think that if they do this right and they get developers behind it with good first party games with new technology, and and of course it, it won't be as powerful as a PS4, but to have you know console quality games is what Sony tried to do first. Of course, I think Nintendo is actually going to beat them to the punch. But if they're able to do it one last time and kind of take some of this you know mystique away from Nintendo, 
it could actually work out well for him. And this thing looks very similar to the Nintendo Switch. And if those controllers come off, how do you the way compete that, with this? By uh, being a, a PlayStation device, this this has this is an eight hundred dollar device, right? That you already have in your pocket. How do you compete with that? I mean. Everything has its place, Briar. I mean, my phone costs seven hundred dollars. It's a, it's a PlayStation phone, mm-hmm. it, but I don't fucking play games on this. I play games on my gaming devices. Mm-hmm. I'd much rather play the Switch than play, you know, Rolling Sky or something on my phone. Everything has its place, and of course, there are different people. There's different people who do, do different things with their technology. I'm just not into gaming on you know on a phone. I don't like the the touch screen. I don't like any of that. I stuff. think the smarter thing is you know use the device that everybody's already got. And release games for that. Like to me, releasing a mobile device is just like it doesn't make any sense anymore. Like, wh- how many things are you gonna have in your pockets or in your backpack? I feel like if you have to do a portable, I feel like the smartest thing to do is to make it really cheap. I think you have to get that entry price low because people exactly have cell phones. They're like, why would I buy this? You gotta make the entry price really low. I think for people to even look at it because they already the have PSP something they're now. happy with. The PSP or PS Vita, sorry. Oh, you can get the Vita for like $129. No. I saw a PS. I, I'm not talking it. from a dude at a gas station. Hello, stranger. <laughs> um, I mean, like from I like a store. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's probably around $150. I couldn't imagine yeah. it being $200. Yeah, it's not that much. But at this pawn shop, legal, I saw a PSP. What's it called? The PSP Go? The little small mm-hmm. one? Yeah, twenty nine yep. bucks mint condition. I should have picked it up. It's still there. Oh, that's just good. To, just to stick it up oh. there on the wall. Just beautiful. All right. So the last the last little bit of news we have for this episode one forty two of Beastly Thoughts Live. Todd Howard has revealed that Bethesda Game Studios currently has seven projects going. This includes Skyrim for the Nintendo Switch. God, it's not Skyrim Remaster. Um, Fallout Four VR and a new mobile title that is in development. This also likely includes the inevitable Elder Scrolls 6 and a new IP, which the studios confirmed in the past that both titles are currently in development. That's not a typo either. Seven projects. I checked this many times. Seven. That's a lot. That is a lot. Oh, man. Fallout VR. Is that going to work with the the game I already have? I don't know. That's for Vive. That's just for Vive. Yeah. Oh, that's bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I mean, not for you, Briar. It's great for you. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't else. own Fallout for PC, so I'll be buying it regardless. But, I mean, that could be pretty. That could be a pretty interesting way to get me back into Fallout as if it was all of a sudden a VR game, right? If Ooh, I could explore that yeah. world in VR uh, instead of... That's the thing. Are you actually going to be able to do that in VR? Don't see that's why incredible. Not. Right? That's pretty cool. I mean, yeah, but it's an open world. It seems like that would be so much, so much of a strain to do in VR. Why? Wow. Because, like, Resident Evil was the first truly immersive, big, full title in PSVR, but it's it's not an open world. It's it's a linear experience. And yeah. I'm thinking that open world is just going to be more taxing on the hardware, much more taxing. But, you know, I guess it all depends on the computer. I think your computer, like, it can give birth. So your computer is fucking <laughs> all horrific. So it fucking probably, runs as hot as the goddamn sun. So it could... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Dinner ready? I don't know. Let me check. It's like 20 degrees outside. I got the window wide open when I got this thing came in. <laughs> so Skyrim for, for the uh, Nintendo Switch, that's a game I would actually be excited about. But the fact that it's not the remaster does, you know, I got Skyrim remaster. I haven't played it on my PS4. But uh, I would definitely like to take that game on the go. Who hasn't dreamed of playing a, a Skyrim or Elder Scrolls game online? I mean, on a portable device. That'd be amazing. Man, like, I love Skyrim, but this doesn't excite me just because I've played Skyrim so many times that I don't want to buy it again. Like, Well, you just recently honestly, got into it again, too, so that's, you know, you played it within the last three or four months. Right. But a lot of people yeah. haven't played it, like, in the last two and a half years, so. I've never know, played it in. Oh, man, you oh, missed Briar. it. Oh, man. It's, 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 a, it's a truly so amazing good. experience. Yes, it is. It is. It's, a, it's a great experience. Yeah, and it's gotta, one that you need to I have. I get on that one. Yeah, well, I mean, don't take it away from your, you know, your PC loving ass uh, HTC Vive Oculus Rift stuff. You know, it's it's pointless for you to come back. And you'll get to it about as fast as you got to Far Cry Four. <laughs> oh, hold on. Oh, he's like, I'm just gonna zone no, out now. He's talking to an invisible person. It, oh. It's a giant black man behind him. Look how black he is. You could barely 
Briar's just standing in front of him. Sorry, guys. My wife wanted to know what I wanted for dinner. So oh, good. It's, it's so good. So good. Well, I mean, we're going to eat fresh tonight, baby. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, I'm looking forward to anything Bethesda is doing. Um, for the most part, every game that they make is usually a hit. I'd love to see a remaster of Fallout New Vegas. That's the one I never played. Mm. Oh, and That'd 3. Nice. Oh, my God. Never, Actually, I would be excited for that. I really would. Never oh, played yeah. Fallout New Vegas. Uh, and I would love to see Morrowind, uh, some of these older yeah. games, too. They just and included Morrowind in the uh, online, uh, the Tamriel yeah. uh, the Scrolls game. I have that, too. Beastly but, New Vegas is amazing. The, the story, especially in New Vegas, was, I was, love so much. It's so good. That. It really is. Yeah, well, that's the news. Uh, if you know anybody with a coat, just stay away from them. Yeah, just stay away from dudes in trench coats. I think that's a so good advice. Policy. <laughs> yeah. It's like 70 You'll degrees down here. Why is he wearing a trench coat? <laughs> in fucking nope. Atlanta. Just Don't look at him, son. Walk the other the way. Good policy. Walk the other Stay way. Stay away from dudes in trench coats. <laughs> he might be trying to sell you seal pack. I just messed it up. He might be trying to sell you steel packs. Don't buy into it. Don't buy into it. He's Ubisoft. Run away. Just run away. I mean, how do often it. do you meet somebody in a parking lot that has exactly what you want, Briar? It's like if you... Just imagine. Just think of something very random. And you, you just need it. You're thinking about buying it at home. Maybe you need something, a, a cork to open up some wine. You get out and you walk, start walking to the store. And the guy says, hey, check this out. Two two bucks. You're like, holy shit, that's a $12 cork. <laughs> check this <Yeah>. out. <laughs> yeah. Check me out. Check all this stuff I got. <laughs> uh, well, it's been a hell of a week. I got a lot of games to play. Um, yeah. And, and hopefully I get a chance to play some of them. I'm really looking forward to Final Fantasy 15, though. Yeah. They're asking in chat if anybody played Neo. That's one of the games I'd love to play. I just haven't had a chance yet. Neo looks so dope. I am going to get that at some point. Did you say dope? Are there black people up in Canada? Dope? That's a that's a white word. I've been oh. saying it quite a lot. I must be white. Yeah. And, 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 you know, my people know a, few, a thing or two about dope as well. So uh, maybe he... Well, I'm sure, like, like most good language that uh, white suburbanites use, it, it was stolen from black culture. <laughs> word. word word yeah <laughs> I can't even, I can't drink my damn water <laughs> I thought you said that was beer beastly you lying to me no it's, clear, that was beer. It's, it's called clear beer clear beer clear okay beer. with ice cubes in it you, yeah. can, you can see me through the glass beer beer yeah. so it's beer that's supposed to taste like water hmm. Hmm. no it's it's clear beer that tastes like clear water it's like okay. Pepsi Clear. Man, have you tried that? You know it's back out, right? No, I didn't know it was back out. It's yep. back out. That and just guess came what? Back. When I saw it, I said, oh my fucking God, let me buy one. <laughs> I taste this. It's just as bad as it used to be. This is really? some shit. Yeah. I, you know, I wasn't around when it was out. I'd like to try it, though. I'll try I don't know it. if I ever tried it when it was around the first time. Yeah, well, it tastes like a, a shitty Sprite with like some Pepsi DNA in it. That's a great way to describe well, it. Well, that sounds awful. I'm <laughs> so excited to try DNA it now. Thanks, sprite. Beastly. <laughs> I'm so excited to try it now. Thanks for that. <laughs> like my Sprite DNA free. <laughs> like, oh, I never tried it before. It sounds great. No, actually, it tastes like shit. Well, never mind. Then. That's basically what you just told me. <laughs> this is the best show on earth. This is like, I love you know, doing this show every week. Barnum every Bailey day. and uh, the, the Barnum Bailey Circus closed, and this is now the greatest show on earth. <laughs> Yes. We are the circus. Yes. Thank you for joining us for this crazy hour of shit. I hope you I, enjoyed it. I think Britney Spears' song was about this show, Circus. Yeah, I took you back. Oh, all this time. Wow. I, I just don't understand the reference. That's going to do it for this show, guys. Thank <laughs> Great. Thank you very much for hanging out. You guys tell them about the reference in the comment section below. I know some yeah. of you guys listen to Britney Spears. Sometimes I run. <laughs> Sometimes I hide. I do on occasion, but you know, not regularly. They're like weirdos, like beastly. Sorry. Hey, man, you would never <laughs> even imagine the shit that I listen to when I drive through the hood. I will have fucking Final Fantasy music playing super duper loud, and I pull up and roll the window down, and the cats, the guys look on the corner, they look at me, they don't know what to do, so they they kind of go like they're listening to it, and I just look at them like a they're like. Yeah, we think it. Like crazy. You hear what he's listening to? Hell yeah! Is that the fucking Minecraft music? No, this is Minecraft. <laughs> Listen, this is how you fuck with black people if you're black. Man, me, I'm uh -huh. six foot tall, 270 pounds, big ass beard. 
I will drive through the hood playing Yellow Brick Yellow Brick Road by Elton John. Wow. <laughs> Loudly. <laughs> and, and and they'll look, they'll go, awesome. Goodbye, Yellow Brick Road. They're like, what the fuck is going on? You about to shoot somebody. Yeah. <laughs> Just how you confuse your own people. It's amazing. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, What's I got a lot to think about for this one. Lots to think about. So it's gonna take a bit to process. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for the raid. Uh, I can't remember who raided us. Thank you very much. I really appreciate Someone that, did. man. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I'm looking through the comments right now. Damn it, missed it. But uh, thank you to everybody. Thank you to uh, all the new people who stopped by. Uh, and we'll see you guys next week, Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, we do the show every week, and I'll see you guys there. We'll see you on Sunday. Thank you, guys. Holla, holla, holla. holla. Let's go holla. Holla back. Learn a new word. Have a great night, everybody.